Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the June 2020 energy report. Well, it appears the fires of transformation have been lit, but in my opinion, they've been lit, but they haven't found a pathway of transformation yet. They're burning wildly. So, that's just my humble opinion, but definitely the message, uh, one of the messages I got was the fire has been lit. It just simply needs a pathway, a harmonious pathway. So if you're new to these energy reports, I'll just quickly say that uh, I use the I Ching. I get hexagrams and then I, I speak about that hexagram for, for the month what the message from the sage is uh, and I also bring in the gene keys which is a let's say uh, an alter a, a descendant of the I Ching it, it's a more personal interpretation of the I Ching so we have 64 hexagrams we have 64 gene keys uh, also in these reports I I get words sometimes one word this month, I got a couple of words that describe the energy of the month. So I use I Ching, Jean Keys, words, and my own feelings. So when I tuned in to get the, the uh, words and energy in the hexagram for this month, it was um, a day or so after um, the incident with George Floyd. So it was just the first day after the protests. And I hadn't really, I saw that there were protests in Minnesota, Minneapolis. I think I've just confused it. I don't, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't, I can't remember what state it was, uh, where the protests were beginning. And so I think it was Saturday or Sunday night when all the protests seemed to have broken out across the U.S., I tuned into the news station, just happened to just thought, let me let's see what's going on. I don't hardly ever watch uh, things like this. My God, when I tuned in and they were reporting from every city across the United States, it was unbelievable, the protest. And what was shocking was my physical response to what I was seeing. I was visibly shaking. I started shaking. I could feel, I was really tuning in. I was um, listening with my body. I purposely, I didn't watch with the mind or the ego. I purposely sat there and tuned in with my entire body to just see if I could get a sense of what was happening, and what these people were feeling. And it was overwhelming. I started shaking, you know, like, like you're cold, that kind of shaking. I shake the entire time I watch, more than an hour. And I was having waves of emotional weeping, that kind of response. So it was a very wow kind of moment. And the words that I got for this month, a couple days before, one of the words I decided that at that moment, I thought I've got to look up that word because I don't know what it is. I've never used it. I don't think I've ever heard it. And uh, the first word that I got for June was the word ver verklempt. Apparently we use it in the English uh, vocabulary, but it's a Yiddish word and it means overcome with emotion. And it was, it's so appropriate, not only for the end of May, but I, this word for clamped being overcome with emotion, I feel is going to continue into June. So be prepared. Uh, we do have some astrological things going on, two eclipses, one lunar, one solar. Um, these eclipses, I can't remember if it's the solar one. I think it's the solar one that is the same type of energy and astrological alignment or situation that was uh, back in 2001 during 9-11. So this is the type of energy 
that is around influencing us. Um, when I tuned into the word for clamped for a little bit more understanding, I mean, of course, this is all e e emotionally overwhelming times. But when I tuned in, I noticed that um, it seems that perhaps not the rioting, but there's going to be more things for us to be overwhelmed with emotionally. Some more explosive energy I saw, a little bit more destruction, not only in the United States, but I did see some things in the UK, but globally, okay? So this is preparing you for emotionally overwhelming times, this feeling of being verklempt. And I think that that's quite an appropriate word. Mm -hmm. The other word that I got, I got three other words. Um, the other word was mystifying, mystified. You're going to be mystified. <laughs> and that word uh, means to be, you know, perplexed, uh, obscure. There's going to be things that are very obscure. We won't be, won't understand what all that is going on. Um, and there's, there's, two, there's two messages that I got here. This word mystifying can, can also mean uh, being hoodwink, hoodwinked or duped. So I think there's some hoodwinking going on. We're being duped in some way, and you could certainly relate that to the rioting and the looting that's going on, that it's not coming from the protesters. There's some hoodwinking going on in the manufacturing of the riots and the destruction. But when I tuned in specifically of where this energy of, of um, mystifying us <laughs> was coming from, I immediately saw Trump. And it was, it's so weird. I can hardly tune into anything anymore. I, I, I think my inner sight is going or has been taken away or something. Um, but I, I just saw Trump fade in and fade out. So I get this feeling, what I got was, he's just not going to be very, it's going to be mystifying to us. He's going to perplex us. Maybe he's going to be more obscure in his, in his appearances or in his um, communication. I don't know, but we're certainly going to be even more mystified by the world of Trump. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, the second word, third, sorry, third word I got was the word treaties. And not treaties I-S-E, but treaties in uh, multiple of treaty. And it, it made it very clear that it was multiple of treaties. So treaties are contracts and agreements and alliances. And when I tuned in, it felt more of a military feel, but hopefully, this um, transformational fire that is burning in the protesters, which I think right now don't really have a direction. They have a message for justice for Mr. Floyd and uh, the harsh treatment of police and, and minorities and disenchanted groups. But I think they, it needs more direction, like, we got the message for justice for George, but there's deeper issues there. Anyway, hopefully groups will come together and create a plan, a real message, um, begin to engage, which is the fourth word I got, engagement. Engage with government, police, you know, begin to form a plan. What really needs to happen coordinate meetings, make agreements, make alliances. And that to me is when the real transformational fires will work in a, in a harmonious way. Right now it's just um, a lot of emotion burning out of control. And that's perfectly fine. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect starting spot. So I don't wanna um, diminish the role of protesters, but they need to find a why and a how and a plan so that they can be met with more openness on the other side. 
And I have to say, of course, the other side is responsible as well for wanting to meet, to saying, how can we help you? Let's devise a plan. So I think our government and our leader is um, in all areas, on either side, we're all missing the point. We're, we're just fighting each other and not communicating, not at this point that, that don't seem willing to really talk. Okay, you can hug each other in the streets, you can kneel, but that's really, we've done that before. Sorry to say, and nothing's changed. So we need a different route this time. Okay, so treaties. I did see it was more of a military thing, but I think um, needs to happen within the protesters. Um, the fourth word I got was, again, engagements. Now, of course, that's the perfect word for June. <laughs> Although people mostly get married in June, but maybe they get engaged in June as well. But when I tuned in to the word, I saw that it was a military engagement. And I saw specifically that it was between Putin definitely came into the picture, and I thought it was China. So I don't know if there's going to be Putin-China engagement or military engagement, because I saw a tanker uh, being more visible or interacting with other countries or more visible on our streets. I do not know. So those are the four, four words and energies that I got for June. For Klempt. Be prepared, you're going to be overcome with emotion, maybe some shocking events. Um, we're also going to be mystified <laughs> by our leader. I, I suspect by all our leaders, everything's gonna seem obscured. We're gonna feel like we're being duped, like we just won't know. It's gonna be a very obscuring, mystifying kind of month. Uh, however, treaties and alliances will be made or the, the thought process for that will start rolling and uh, there perhaps will be some engagements, hopefully romantic, but most likely military. Okay. Um, the hexagram that I got for this month was hexagram eight. And when I first looked at it and it took me a couple of days, so I didn't really want to do this video because I thought, Oh, the eight, when I first glanced at it, I thought, when I looked at the hexagram and the I Ching and the um, gene keys, I thought, oh, this is so totally off. This doesn't fit. But the more I sat with it over a couple of days, it really is the perfect hexagram. And then in the I Ching, let me look over here. First of all, uh, the hexagram number eight is called um, holding together. And it speaks to the forces of attraction that hold the entire invisible universe together as well as the visible or manifest universe. It's, it, it is the underlying force of everything, this force of attraction. And uh, yes, you could, the most common way of, of looking at this is the law of attraction, like, like attracts like. But the I Ching speaks to it in a more uh, finessed way, and I think a more appropriate, accurate way. It's forces, um, complementary forces, that are attracted to each other. Like attracts like seems to mean very uh, narrow like energies, where complementary energies give you a wider range of attraction forces. So if you eat, just look at the number eight and you lay it down and you think there are two objects, say a relationship, and they both have their circles, but eventually, you know, they have a wide range of frequencies. Yeah? Forces of attraction. Eventually, they're going to meet and clash in the middle. These are the forces of attraction. So there's a wide range of complementary energies that can meet in the middle and clash. And I think the overall message from the sage about this, these complementary attractive forces is that nothing, 
nothing in the universe, nothing in your personal life, nothing in the world that you see is by accident. Nothing is unjust. It is 100% a just universe. Life is justice itself. Now, we can speak to these complementary forces as being karmic in attraction. Have you, um, are you in a harmo? <laughs> so this justice is talking about, you know, the principle of cosmic harmony. Are you in karmic harmony? Meaning you are acting and vibrating in a tone that is of the collective ego or the ego in your personal ego that is has some fear or emotion or belief system that is causing you to vibrate in a more karmic harmonic tone or are we vibrating at a dharmic harmonic tone right i think i'm kind of losing my anyway my train of thought <laughs> i always get a little too complicated so the message is, you know, we have to look at what is going on, what happened to George, what's happened to all the Georges and all the people and all the things in our life, whether we're interacting with, we have a relationship that's highly volatile. We think that there's no way this could be right. How could the universe do this um, or whatever? It's always justice. You are complementary energetic forces that have drawn you together. So um, each side has responsibility, equal responsibility. Now, I hope this doesn't upset anybody, but, you know, for, for example, I think I'm looking. I know the camera is there, but I'm looking here because <laughs> my computer screen is crooked. I don't really want to move it. Let's see. Maybe that'll help. Let me move this. It doesn't matter. Um, so, you know, in the case of, of Mr. Floyd or all of the George Floyds out there, they could not have come together, met in the middle, collided in the middle, had there not been complementary, sorry, yes, complementary forces at work there complementary attractive forces at work. Did Mr. Floyd, maybe I shouldn't use his name, did this situation of this person have an underlying fear of being mistreated or fear of, of authority? Or have they taken on say a particular group of disenchanted individuals and this is what the holding together uh, gene I'm sorry hexagram eight talks about it's how the forces of the universe hold together but it also talks about how groups of people hold together and are they holding together in cosmic harmony or are they holding together in collective karmic harmony which means that they have a particular belief and image about themselves, their group, that is holding them together with the image that this other group is holding them together. So Mr. Floyd may have had an image and a fear about himself, about his life, about who he was, about the certain group that he's a part of, working in his energy field and then this person feeling that my life is full of injustices i'm not thought of as a as a real human being and then of course you you have this other group who feels like oh what whatever their fear is or anger is or belief system and they collide in and while it's not justice in the human ego perspective, from the cosmic perspective, you know, the cosmos is always trying to be 
bring people and things back into cosmic harmony. That is perfect harmony, karmic harmony. I think it was, I, I just heard somebody speak about Julian Norwich. Um, and she spoke about that love and harmony attracts harmony and sin attracts sin or sin eats sin, something like that. Two sins don't make a right. <laughs> okay, so you get the picture. Um, so we have to look at what's, what has gone on and what's going on right now as being in total harmony. The universe is trying to right itself, but I, I think the message I'm trying to get across is that, or the sages, and what I'm feeling is, um, when I'm looking at these protests, I'm sorry, this is gonna be a long video, I suspect, um, that both groups, but particularly the group that is feeling the injustice or you know, has now taken action towards dealing with the injustice, they really need to take responsibility and look at, are we holding images of ourselves from the past do we uh, think of ourselves as being disenchanted, not, not disenchanted, disenfranchised, looked down upon? Do I feel like I was a mistake or am I angry? Do I look at others as the enemy? Um, you know, all that. We have to remove those images and function and, and respond in a not in the situation so it feels a little awkward speaking on on another group of people's behalf but i think you understand what i'm saying you just can't be angry and react there's responsibility on both sides okay enough of that <laughs> um what else did i want to say oh yeah and so uh going back to thinking that this hexagram eight was totally the wrong hexagram. Well, it's totally not, of course, perfect. So hexagram number eight or gene key eight is part of um, the codon ring group of uh, the ring of water. And this couldn't be any more perfect for this time. And in the, this codon ring, the ring of water consists of two hexagrams, two gene keys, number two and number eight. And number two is, represents the Divine Mother in the invisible form. And that she is the loving, we can call it the Piscean energy, which is so perfect because Mars is in Pisces. And where does Mars fit in? Well, eight is the action, the manifest form of the invisible mother, the watery consciousness. Eight is the is sort of the manifest, almost masculine energy of the feminine energy, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so, astrologically, Mars is in Pisces, and Mars represents, you know, man, uh, intelligent activity, creativity, revolution. We want we're warriors, and what's going on right now is kind of the shadowy aspect of it. So. The codon ring of water is absolutely, the water is stirring up the sediment and causing right now the shadowy reaction, the, the violent aggressive an energy of the eight and Mars energy. So it is the perfect hexagram for this month, Mars being in Pisces. So the mother, the divine water is stirring up the sediment the fires of transformation that have been lit, but we kind of don't have a direction yet. What else did I want to say? Sorry, you know, I never quite prepared too well for these things. Um, <clears throat> I want to read something. Well, I'm going to, so let me see here. Let me read something from the gene keys, gene key number eight, which makes this absolutely um, perfect message for how groups, groups of people have taken on an image and how it's our, it, it really uh, 
creates karmic harmony in us. So it says here, the eighth shadow gives you a recognizable stereotype in the world, which not only makes you feel safe about who you think you are, but also makes others feel safe about who they think you are. Without this stereotypical facade, you might who, facade, who might you be? How would others approach you? The answer is that the mainstream would look at you and, with a mixture of both fear and awe. So what he's saying is that, so what this steam key is about once again is that this really, this gene key, basically, the whole underlying message of the gene key is fear of success. That we are fearful to step into our own inner truth, to create our own, to step out of the group, step out of the norm, and do what we want. To have our own authentic style. To be a rebel with a cause. Like to be a rebel from even your own group and the own message um, or image that you have. And it's not fear of failure, but fear of success. Interesting, right? Um, and so you compromise or you never, you just never really do anything. And really that stirs up a lot of anger and resentment and repressed energy. And it says here, mediocrity is defined by others rather than by yourself. Yeah? It says, and mediocrity has two main functions. Firstly, it keeps you from thinking outside the box, which is totally what we need to do now. Now's the time to think outside of the box, okay? Stop, just stop thinking inside the box, that box that you have of yourself. Um, Anyway, I think that message is clear about the A's. I'm losing my train of thought, so it must be time to bring this energy to a close. No, the message, <laughs> I'll read a couple more things from the sage here. There were some specific uh, lines that, that the sage wanted to speak to. Um, let me put this on pause. Okay, I kind of lost my way there the last couple of minutes. So I'm still a little lost, but I think what I'm gonna do is just read a couple of lines here that I underlined that uh, might resonate with you. So this is coming from uh, hexagram eight, holding together. And it says here, while the cosmic consciousness is capable of thinking, it is primarily a feeling consciousness right? These attractive forces. A feeling consciousness that operates through the force of attraction between complementary aspects. So a wide range of aspects complement each other. Um, this hexagram shows that the basis for a person's unity with the cosmos and therefore with others is holding together with the sage in his presence. Since, since the sage or uh, cosmic consciousness or um, silence, your helpers calling in God, whatever. See, this is, this is all, everything that, all of this transformation that is going on, we cannot solve from the human mind alone. It's time for us to kind of open up and always ask, and in your personal life, right? Of course, always ask now that the sage or God or great spirit or the universe, whatever, come into the relationship and show you the way, be a part of the third party, the witness, okay, the mediator. Uh, I do that every single time, although it doesn't seem to help. But whenever I have a conversation with somebody, doesn't matter who it is, customer service, a friend doing these, but I always call in the sage. That doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not tense and I don't hear the message, but it's always there to, when you call in the sage and 
whatever interaction that, that you're having, regardless if things seem to go wrong, there's always a group of helpers to smooth things out because your intention and sincerity was there. So whether you're dealing with an ex, a boss, whatever, always call in the sage to help you communicate and receive what is needed, okay? Um, receiving this hexagram can indicate that a person has replaced holding together with the sage by uh, with the sage by holding to a fixed belief or customs. Um, all unity between two people is made possible by recognizing and respecting each other's boundaries. This being the pre prerequisite, the sage then makes their harmonious connection possible. Okay, um, there's an interesting phrase in here. It's, it's talking about um, kind of a spell that we've put on ourselves in the collective ego. It, it's, we wouldn't say that we had this spell, but it's, it's how we go through life, that we forget to call in the sage or the cosmos, and that we sort of see life as an adversary. Um, particularly, and this was, message was for me, when we keep asking the universe, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? That we see that, the, that life is not responding to you. We, by doing that, you're seeing life as your adversary. That just you being you isn't purpose enough. Um, what does it say here? Beacon. Again, I lost my way, I'm sorry. This is probably a terrible video, I'm very sorry. Um, but it also talks about here that um, it is not the idea that we need to possess, possess a storehouse of knowledge in order to face life and to be protected against the future is similarly flawed because it is based on the idea that life is an adversary. Such a slander on life creates a face, a uh, faith. A pers the person who maintains his conscious connection with the sage, your higher self, receives the help and protection he needs during adversarial times. Fearing the unknown is based on the same assumption that life is an adversary and has the same consequences. This line also warns against holding together with another when there is no inner connection. This is obvious when the ego in the other person is constantly in control. An inner connection can occur only between two people's true selves. So there you go. And that was one, one of the direct messages from the sage for this month. And line two, which was another direct message from the sage, says this... Um, And I think this is kind of, um, it talks about how we, we execute another when we say, oh, he'll never get it. Um, we execute their true self in them when, when we make statements, particularly when we're talking about Trump or our leaders, like, oh, we give up on him, he'll never get it, that we lock people into the behavior that we don't want because we keep saying that, that we keep executing his true self. And that um, in relationships that we want to end, it says the correct way to end a relationship is to ask the helper of relationships to cut the inner connections. Otherwise, they will remain bound together inwardly. An unclosed inner connection is a channel through which blame, anger, envy, and other ego-driven emotions travel, creating projection spells and other yucky things. Anyway, uh, I know I've dragged this on long enough. Um, sorry, I'm, just, I'm trying to be a little bit less uh, talking fast and being a little bit more thoughtful, but I kind of lost my way. <laughs> so this month, hexagram eight, um, we may become overcome with emotions we're gonna to be totally perplexed at times, maybe even duped 
Um, but I think in the end, there's going to be some beginning of uh, treaties, alliances, maybe some engagements, military engagements, who knows. Um, but the big message is, whether in your personal life or as we look out to what's happening in the world, remember that there really is no injustices, really, that life and nature is constantly trying to bring us back into harmony. And we have to see that everything that happens in our life is harmonic. Whether it's karmic harmony or cosmic harmony, harmony, harmony. We have to take responsibility and uh, on both sides. Both sides have responsibility, okay? So, Why don't we just hold together with the sage and our higher selves and um, not with another person's ego or the collective ego. Have the courage to be a rebel for your own cause and that cause being your own uniqueness, saying no to the group and past images, behaviors, thoughts that have defined you into a stereotype, now's the time to let all of that go and hold together with the universe rather than anyone else, any other group or any other belief system. Okay, I'm done.